Hi guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we are doing another family portrait. And um, today's family portrait is going to be on the house of Estee Lauder. But uh, it's not just going to be Estee Lauder, the brand itself. This was um, recommended to me by one of my subscribers. Um, and you know who you are. Thank you very much. It's a great idea. He said, why don't you do a family portrait on all of the Estee Lauder brands that they own. So number one, this is going to be a long video. Um, you know, YouTube nowadays wants you to put out these shorts, these seven second videos, because that's what a person's attention span is nowadays. They have the attention span of a gnat and they can't pay attention to anything for more than a couple seconds before they look elsewhere. That's not what this channel is going to be. I'm not going to cater to the YouTube algorithms because mostly I just don't care. You know, I'm, I'm going to put out content that I want to put out. And this will probably appeal to the real fragrance connoisseurs. If I had to guess, this is going to be a long video because the brands covered are Estee Lauder, Aramis, Frederick Mall, Killian, Tom Ford, Lalabo, and one odd Donna Karen from way back when. Um, and if you can guess what that fragrance is already, then you know your fragrance history. So let's start with um, the brand that I hate the most, Lalabo. And um, this is a decant that I bought off of the perfumed court of Santal 33. Um, and I'm very glad I got a decant because I, I don't hate this fragrance as much as some people do, but um, Lalabo is just a pretty, I don't think they're a very good house. You know, they, um, uh, they, they are a house that, um, you know, caters to a certain group of people. Um, and, uh, the trendy group of people, you could say, um, this fragrance has a, uh, pickle juice accord. Some people say, which I do see what they're saying there, but it's the, I think it's the the synthetic sandalwood mixing with that papyrus note, which normally I like the papyrus note. Um, there is some iris in this, which I usually like because it gives the fragrances a little bit of powdery depth, um, but this is purely synthetic. It's also an absolute monster. It will reach out and, you know, grab somebody, um, you know, two, three, four, four people away from you, they'll smell you. Um, and so Lalabo Santal 33 is the only Lalabo in my collection. I'm glad it's not a full bottle because uh, Lalabo is a, is a shite house. It's not really for me. Um, but I wanted to show it to you because it's under that Estee Lauder umbrella. Okay, now that we got one that I don't really care for too much out of the way, let's talk about some pure loves. Let's talk about the House of Aramis. Um, and this is basically where it all started. These are all done by um, Bernard Chant up until a certain point, until once, once we get to the more modern stuff. So he is an absolute perfume legend. And this fragrance was created in 1966. This is Aramis by Aramis. Um, and this is a uh, woody, leathery sheaf. Uh, probably one of my favorite leathery sheafs of all time. Another one's coming up at the end of the video. Uh, so we're going to bookend this with fantastic leathery sheaf fragrances. Um, but uh, this is an older bottle, as you can say, back when it said cologne, not EDT. Um, I don't know how to basically tell the, the age of these bottles, but I did find, sorry about that, um, I did find on eBay they were selling this exact bottle with a camera, uh, a disposable camera with film in it. And so obviously this is probably sometime in the 80s, I would have to guess. Um, but uh, this was created in 1966, and I love how it mixes the myrrh and fresh aldehydes in the top with this, uh, you know, heavy patchouli leather oak moss, very manly notes. There's supposed to be a note of coconut in here, according to Fragrantica. I never get coconut, but I do get the leather, oak, moss, musk, vetiver, sandalwood. Um, this is just, I mean, this is, um, like I've said in some of my other videos, this is what men used to smell like before they started smelling like uh, bubblegum and praline. So if you want a 
all-time great masculine, this would definitely be on my list and probably on my top 10 leather list, which I will do very soon. That's been requested as well. So Aramis by Aramis, if you can hunt down an older bottle that says Cologne, uh, please do so. That is probably going to get you closest to experiencing real oak moss. It is is what I think. I'm not an expert at dating these bottles though, but this is what it uh, what it seems like to me as the older before they started calling it EDT. If you can hunt down one that says Cologne, that'll get you very close to the original. So Aramis by Aramis, where it all started. Next is a very interesting vintage bottle of Aramis 900 Herbal Cologne Spray. Look at the bottle. Um, you can see the red outline on the cap that kind of gives you a hint of what this fragrance has to offer. You know, this is, uh, now we're moving from 1966 to 1973. Look at the release. Look at the time uh, between the releases. It's not, you know, flanker one year and then flanker six months later. You know, they took some time into, this was the next release if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 1973. This is an old tester that I bought. I won an eBay auction, I think, to get this. Um, and there is the bottom of the bottle. Uh, if you can see from the glare, um, you've got the batch code imprinted right there. But um, this is basically also a woody sheaf, but it adds this amazingly masculine dark rose. Um, if you like uh, Amwaj's Lyric Man, sorry, I'm a little under the weather today. All that time with family, I think, um, kind of finally got to me. It's a couple days after Christmas if you're watching this video much later. Um, and so if I forget a couple things, that's why. But this was such a good video that, uh, or a good video idea that I wanted to go ahead and knock it out. But if you like the idea of old school vintage masculines like this, but maybe you want to add a little bit of a floral touch, or maybe if you're someone who, you know, struggles with rose, I would say try this. If you can find the vintage bottle, do it. Um, I'm going to show you a more modern version. This is what they all ended up going into, this type of bottle. This is Havana. We'll get to that later on. But this type of bottle is what they all ended up being moved into. Very similar to the YSL video I did yesterday. I told you they moved them all into those square bottles. This is the Aramis bottle that they all ended up moving into. So if you can find a vintage like this, grab it, because this fragrance has civet and oak moss, and you get that real oak moss feel. It, you know, oak moss was not... Um, regulated at all in the old days. There's a perfumer friend of mine, Yura, who you'll see in the comments commenting from time to time, and he says that in the old days there was no regulation at all. So if somebody wanted to use 50, 60, 70% oak moss, they could. Now, I doubt they did because now they're limited to 0.1%. So probably 5 to 10% of a, you know, formulation was, um, was, was pretty huge back then. Um, is my guess, but maybe they made some that are 40-50% oak moss. I don't know, but Aramis 900, if you like that, um, if you like that classic masculine sheaf feel, but you want to add the floral rose accord, this is, um, this is one of my favorite masculine rose fragrances, along with Amouage Lyric Man. So, from 1973, uh, we are going to skip to the year... 1977. So again, we're talking years apart. They they release these. They're not doing flankers every year, every six months, or you know, every three months like they are now. This is Aramis Devon, and you can see this is a vintage bottle. Again, they all went to this bottle. I'll repeat myself. They all went to this bottle eventually. So if you can find this, uh, get it. If you can't, the modern formulation is still very good with this fragrance and with Aramis 900, if, if I'm not mistaken, if my memory is serving me properly. Um, but this will get you closer to the original. You've probably seen this bottle already before because I showed it off on my haul from Enchante. And um, I think he has 20 or so bottles left over is what he told me. He has a lot of stock in this. 
And um, this is an interesting sheaf because it's very green. It has a lot of um, galbanum in it, definite galbanum. If you like uh, Chanel number 19, but you wanted something maybe a little bit more masculine. And what's interesting is this came out, I think, five or six years after Chanel number 19. So that type of green, you know, uh, fragrance style was was in in the 1970s. And um, this just takes it and, and brings it to this masculine lo level that I absolutely love. It's got Artemisia in the top, which is green. It's got Lavender, which can come off very green. Uh, it's got pine needles green, uh, and then of course it has that heavy oak moss and labdanum and leather in the base. But this is actually one that uh, I will wear in summer. It's a it's a summer hot weather wear to me. Whereas you know the first couple that I showed you are probably more colder you know colder weather. But um, I used to be very strict about when I wore my fragrances. If it was a summer fragrance, I wore it in the summer. If it was a winter fragrance, I wore it in the winter. It's December 27th in Texas and it's 80 degrees. Today was the high. So I'm starting to get to the point where I wear what I want and, and that's that. And um, if you love fragrances and it's holding you back from wearing what you love, I think the faster you get to that point, the better off you, you the more enjoyable your fragrance collection will become to yourself. So Aramis Devon, um, check out Enchante Perfumes if you're interested in this vintage formulation. You like the way that this sound this also has an old school carnation note in it by the way if carnation scares you off then this might be one to avoid but i actually love the note of carnation i love how uh it used to be used in fragrances like habi rouge and stuff like that so if you like the way this sounds check out devon okay next is uh, a fragrance called aramis jhl and again this is a vintage formulation um so the new formulation got put in this bottle again this regular bottle here uh standardized um and jhl stood for joseph henry louder i believe if i'm not mistaken if i'm wrong i apologize but definitely joseph louder the h uh someone will probably tell me it was something else but i think it was henry um and this is an interesting fragrance because now we're jumping from 1977 to 1982. Again, these have all been Bernard Schant so far. Just legend in the uh, masculine fragrance uh, Aramis community here. And what's interesting, this is a splash bottle by the way, um, what's interesting about this fragrance is that it is an oriental, it's an amber fragrance, um, so it has a lot of those heavy resinous, you know, benzoin, amber, labdanum, vanilla notes in the base. It has this cinnamon and, um, you know, fruity floral feel to it as well in the mid. And it reminds me a little bit of Opium, which I mentioned on my YSL videos, one of my favorite women's fragrances to wear. Opium came out in 1977. This came out in 1982, long enough where, you know, Opium became a hit. Apparently, the rumor goes that Joseph Lauder, Estee Lauder's husband, Loved wearing opium and cinnabar, which is one that I actually don't have. I never sprung for cinnabar since I have opium. Um, that he loved wearing it so much that she commissioned creating this uh, version as a masculine oriental for him. And uh, so he had it a couple years, you know, while opium was famous and wore it himself. And then they ended up releasing it to the public. So that's the story. Who knows how true it is? It has a beautiful patchouli in the base as well. Um, if you like heavy resinous fragrances, give this a try. The only thing I will caution you with this fragrance that you're going to have to get over uh, is the aldehydes in this are strong. You, Chanel's very famous for their aldehydes. Aramis also, the whole line, Bernard Chant was very... Um, pro aldehydic tops. You know, when he made his fragrances, he used a lot of aldehydes in the top, and it shows through in this fragrance harder than any other fragrance. It shows through in uh, this as well, but uh, this is probably, you know, imagine taking opium, adding a huge aldehydic top, 
um, which actually put me off the first time, the first time or two that I wore this. Uh, but then you start to really get used to it and you start to enjoy the transitions between the, you know, citrus opening with aldehydes and fruits to that more resinous cinnamon type base. So usually a cold weather fragrance, wear it whenever you want. That's JHL. Okay, at this rate, this is going to be a two hour video because I'm taking forever. Next, um, next is a citrus fragrance, Tuscany Per Uomo. Again, vintage formulation. You can find it in this bottle. It's still good, but this is the best one because it has that real oak moss. Um, starting to sound like a broken record player here, but this has a beautiful note of anise and then heavy citrus. Tuscany, um, you know, obviously reminds people of that citrus feel, um, bright days. This is a summer fragrance for sure for me, hot weather. Uh, it has this, um, you know, and I've said before, I usually don't like heavy citrus fragrances, but this one is done very well. Um, and they've used a couple citruses at the top. Uh, they've used bergamot and then the lemon and lime combo. So it's very citrus heavy. There is lavender here, so it does give it that old school masculine feel. Um, but then they add this sharp note of anise and caraway and tarragon. So these, these, you know, spices hit you. And there's there's that note of leather in the base. Basil is a note that I, I, I do pick up for sure. There is that green basil, you know, spice feel to it. Um, it, this one, by the way, was released in, um, 1984. So, uh, I don't know if the perfumer was Bertrand Chant here again. I think it might've been, uh, but, uh, this is, um, just a fantastic citrus fragrance. And, um, once we're done talking about this, I'll tell you something I heard about the line as well, which, um, uh, you know, uh, affects maybe the way you'll want to go out and buy these. So next on the list is Havana. And this one I do have a modern version of. This came out in 1994, right before that aquatic wave in the 90s came and washed everything away. Uh, Nathalie Feisthauser created this. And this is a tobacco fragrance, hence Havana. Um, and this is, a, this is a modern bottle, and it is very good. This formulation, they did a great job with this reformulation. I don't know batch codes, but it's AB3 if that matters to anybody. Um, but this is basically, um, you know, a mandarin orange, green, spicy type opening, and then it hits this tobacco. The tobacco basically blends with the green notes. So you get the artemisia, you get the fur, and then you get this tobacco and carn Again, carnation is here again. Even though this is a 90s fragrance, it's kind of towards the end of the time they were using carnation. Um, and so this has a very distinctive feel. I could definitely see this being a signature scent for somebody. I could see this being worn all year round again. It has a freshness. It has this brightness, this optimistic feel to the fragrance, you could say. Um, and I I love this is um, this and the next one coming up are some of my favorite tobacco fragrances. I love tobacco as a note. Tobacco and fragrance is one of my favorite notes in perfumery. And... Um, it's just so masculine, so well done. Uh, you know, this is um, this is a this is an absolute gem. If you love tobacco fragrances, and then you you factor you factor in the fact that you can find this bottle for twenty five or thirty bucks. Well, you used to be able to. I don't know with the news I'm about to tell you uh, once we do this next one if that's still true. But if you can find this on the cheap, grab it. Absolutely, if you like tobacco. This is a fantastic reference tobacco fragrance. Okay, next, we're going to skip ahead a decade. This was 1994. Uh, this is 2018. This is Aramis Tobacco Reserve. And I'm starting to see this fragrance get some love. It only came out in 2018. It immediately got discontinued. I don't think it made it a year. Um, but this is a very dry very green tobacco. So if you don't, if you like tobacco, but you don't necessarily like, let's say, um, Amen Pure Havan, if that's too sweet for you, if Naxos by Zerjoff is too sweet for you, try this. 
Uh, I think you would really like this fragrance. This is one of my favorite tobacco fragrances. Um, it's uh, it's a very simple fragrance, actually. It's only clary sage, black currant in the top, tobacco, nutmeg, and orris in the mid, and tonka bean and oak moss in the base. But that tonka bean is very intelligently done. It's not a, you know, sweet, in-your-face tonka. I'll show you some sweet fragrances coming up soon. Uh, but if you like a green tobacco, a little bit dry, um, this is, uh, it's a shame they discontinued this because this is the type of perfumery that brands should be making nowadays. But they put this out and it didn't sell. So, I mean, you know, Estee Lauder is going to do what they're going to do and they're going to discontinue it. I hear prices are starting to creep up, but I looked before this video and I saw a couple bottles floating around for 70, 80 bucks. Um, and that's a, that's a steal for sure, because this is one of these where in a couple years when supply really dries up, I could totally see this being one of those fragrances that the price skyrockets on. Um, and you know, everyone wants to all of a sudden get in because it was such a great tobacco fragrance. So, um, Aramis Tobacco Reserve, and then the news on the Arabis line, since, since, the, since this is the last one that I wanted to talk about here, is that rumor is Estee Lauder is going to discontinue this entire line potentially, uh, or sell it, or, you know, they might have already sold it, actually. I read an article that I think they might have sold the Aramis distribution rights. So... Anyways, if uh, I don't know if the new company that's buying them is going to keep them, if they're going to reformulate them, but whenever I hear that, I just go, uh, you know, as a frag head, it's grab what you want now while you can before, you know, it goes the way of some of these uh, Patel pour -ohm, you know, thousand dollar a bottle, you know, uh, masculine, vintage masculines, unicorns from the past that you just, you know, can't find without selling your left kidney. So if you can find some of these cheap. And these are some of the best masculines ever produced. Uh, these Aramis fragrances, grab them. Okay, now we're going to move on from Aramis to uh, Donna Karen. This is the only Donna Karen that I own. And it's from 1994. This was done by IFF Perfumers, by the way. Uh, International Flavors and Fragrances. Uh, and this is uh, Donna Karen Man. Uh, DK... DK uh, for men, I guess I should say. DK for men. Let's see if I can show you the bottom without shaking like a leaf here. Uh, you probably can't see that anyways. Um, but uh, this is an interesting fragrance because it smells very modern. It's got this um, powdery, fruity vibe. Uh, I get a heavy note of osmanthus, which is a flower that smells very... Um, nectarine apricot like um but then there's also this floral heart that you would think belongs in um you know like clive christian number one or something there's lang lang orchid heliotrope carnation jasmine rose lily so you see that and you go oh man this is gonna be this is gonna be a woman's fragrance uh but somehow using some maybe synthetic notes like um Fragrantica lists a note of suede instead of leather, and I completely get that because it doesn't smell like you just threw on a leather jacket. Um, it smells like like you're sitting on a suede couch or something. It's strange. It um, All these weird notes, there's incense, amber, musk, you know, there's pineapple in the top. I didn't mention that. So it's got this fruity top with all heavy osmanthus, and then it's got this floral heart. And then the third stage of the fragrance is this heavy resinous base is what it looks like. There's patchouli, benzoin, uh, amber, incense, suede, tonka, vetiver. But somehow uh, they've managed to keep it masculine. And uh, they've managed to keep it relatively light. This does not weigh you down. So the problem with this fragrance is it's long discontinued. And you have to pay an arm and a leg to get this, basically. Uh, literally an arm and a leg. You know, these are going for, God knows, three, four, five, six, seven hundred bucks a bottle, depending on how egregious the person selling it to you wants to be. I got a pretty good deal on this. Um, it's a partial. I think the juice is right, right about there. And this is a... Um, 
This is a 75 ml, so it was probably 40 or 50 mls worth of juice in it, but that's good enough for me. Um, just glad to have it, glad to be able to smell it and wear it. It's kind of a special, I would consider this a special evening fragrance. No one's going to smell like this, uh, unless they're a frag head and they bought 10 bottles 25 years ago and forgot about them kind of thing. So, DK Men, Hidden Gem, uh, um, long lost to the history of perfume, you know, the perfume archives, but if you stumble across a bottle... Um, that's, that's one to, to check out. Okay. On from Donna Karen. Next, we're going to move to a house that, uh, gets a lot of love nowadays. It's Killian's. I don't really care for the house, but I do have a couple of their fragrances and I normally don't like sweet fragrances. Just, I'll put that out there right now. My favorite types of fragrances are dry, resinous, woody. You know, I don't like the sweet, I don't really like sweet, especially that synthetic sweetness. It really gets to me. But uh, this is a hype beast right now. So it's being hard, it's being hyped hard in the community. This is Killian's Angel Share. Um, the best thing about Killian's is probably the presentation. Um, this is a 50 ml bottle. Uh, it looks like a whiskey decanter almost. It's a beautiful uh, whiskey glass. It's a beautiful presentation, and um, this is a sweet fragrance, uh, but true to Killian's name, they have made it very uh, boozy. So there's a note of rum here, or cognac, I'm sorry, and it has that hated praline note I was uh, bitching about earlier in the video, but uh, there's heavy tonka, uh, heavy vanilla. You know, it smells like you just jumped into a swimming pool of pralines, vanilla, you know, tonka, cinnamon, and then this boozy cognac. Uh, but whenever I want something sweet, this is a, a fragrance that I will reach for. Uh, they only sell it in 50 ml bottles, and Killian's prices are larcenous. But if you want something sweet like this, and you're okay adding a leathery note, they don't smell the same, but this CK... Um, I'm sorry, C.H. Men, Car Carolina Herrera Men. This was a partial that I got from a news from Enchante, and I wore this the other night before bed just to give it a, a whirl. And this is a very sweet fragrance. It's basically sugar and leather, literally sugar and leather is what it smells like. Uh, but that leather keeps it from being sickly sweet, where, you know, a lot of these sweet fragrances I spray and I just kind of recoiled. This one I actually relatively enjoyed. So if you don't want to shell out big box for angel share, but you want a sweet fragrance that isn't going to make your teeth fall out, CH Men uh, is, is one to check out. Now, the caveat here is this is a vintage formulation. This is how they used to come with this tassel. Now this tassel's gone and it's imprinted right here and I have not smelled the new stuff. But um, if it's performance you're worried about, this is not a beast. It only stayed on my skin, you know, four or five hours, and then it was gone. So uh, if, if you buy the new stuff and it's only four or five hours and you're thinking the vintage is a beast monster longevity, it's not. But how does it smell? Is it more synthetic? I don't know. Uh, okay, next, the only Killian's fragrance that... I own in one of these insane lacquered boxes. Uh, oh, and the key fell out. Look, so it's locked right now, and it's got this ridiculous key. I overpaid so much for this, and this is one of my uh, big regrets. Let's see if I can even get into this. Okay, so here's the uh, presentation. Again, beautiful presentation. I usually just take these boxes and chunk them in the attic and keep the bottles, but this is one where, oh, it sits in the silk bed because... You know, it's like uh, giving an offering to Jesus or something. But uh, this is uh, Killian's Straight to Heaven Extreme, if you can see right here. Uh, one of the biggest beefs with this fragrance is, is it does not last. The Extreme uh, fixes that. Um, the other thing that Killian's did, which I applaud, is they started to sell these bottles without paying an extra $150 for this lacquered box presentation crap, you know, which I probably should have done. Um, I like this fragrance. I don't love it, though. Uh, people around me tend to really like it when I wear it. I got good feedback from uh, the wife, which almost never happens uh, on this one. But this is 
Straight to Heaven is another boozy. All of these Killians are a lot of times. They're going to be boozy. This is rum in, instead of cognac, basically. Uh, and it's basically rum, dried fruits, and woods. And, so, and, and, and patchouli. Patchouli is the other big note here. Um, big patchouli, actually, now that I think about it. Um, you know, if you... If you like vintage fragrances like Balenciaga Pour Homme, but maybe want to smell what a modern niche house would do with a Balenciaga Pour Homme. This doesn't smell anything like Balenciaga Pour Homme, by the way. Balenciaga Pour Homme is miles ahead of this as far as me, when, I, when I wear Balenciaga Pour Homme, I enjoy it more. But it has this kind of interesting patchouli take that uh, Balenciaga Pour Homme has. This is a little unique. I have to give it to the House of Killians, but then other people say, you know, there's a release from Tiziana Terenzi that's very similar to this. I think they call it um, Ursa. I, don't quote me on it. It might be something completely different. But one of the uh, Tiziana Terenzi fragrances is compared to this. It is Ursa. Um, and apparently the performance there is better. So, again, for 50 ml, whatever I paid for this, 400 bucks, would I buy it again? No. This is one of my biggest mistake buys. Um, just value for money is very low on this one. The smell, fantastic. Um, I like it. Uh, I enjoy wearing it. But would I, you know, 50 ml, it's just uh, value for money is not a very good proposition here. Um, there is a, a fragrance that I found from Jeroboam which is a um, sister house to Javoy called uh, Ling Lig Lingo or Ligno. Uh, if you look up Jeroboam, it's the only one I think that sounds anything like that. Uh, and I think you can buy a 30 ml bottle there for maybe a hundred bucks. Um, Ligno, yeah, L-I-G-N-O. That's another one that's very similar to this Straight to Heaven. I didn't grab it because I only have so much room and this takes time for me to pull all this stuff out for you guys. So I hope you appreciate these videos. But um, if you wanted maybe something a little bit smaller that's in an extra de parfum instead of these uh, EDPs, uh, check out Ligno. I think it's very, very similar to this. And uh, I think the value for money is a little bit better there. I think maybe it was released a year or two after this. So they may have kind of copied this fragrance a little bit, but I'll I'll bring that out and show you guys whenever I do a, a house highlight on the house of Javoy, which is a very good niche house, by the way. Um, and and uh, the brand Jeroboam is actually a sister house of Javoy. I think Javoy owns them. So, um, okay. Now back to getting on topic. This is, uh, we're going to move on to the house of Frederick Mall, another house under the Estee Lauder umbrella. And just real quick, um... I would say that I think Estee Lauder does a very good job of allowing brands to keep their brand identity. You know, um, what Frederick Mall did before Estee Lauder bought them and what they have done after, I think, proves that, you know, they, they have some autonomy. Estee Lauder's not going in there like L'Oreal and just killing some of these formulas. I think what L'Oreal did to... Um, uh, Thierry Mugler house is just egregious, but um, anyways, long story short is I think Estee Lauder's done a good job of allowing these brands to flourish, and Frederick Mall is a case in point. The first one I'm going to show you guys is The Night, which I have a decant here. I was waiting to do this video until this arrived. I got a couple of these to show you. Uh, this is from my good friend Muda Seer from Base Notes, and this is basically a creation from Dominique Ropion who's one of the um, all-time great perfumers. And this is basically just a rose oud with uh, amber and patchouli. It, 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 it's my scent of the day too, by the way. This is a 10 hour dry down. Uh, this is probably six hours or so dry down. And the first hour or two, it's a little bit skanky. It's a little shitty. It smells like you're standing in an area where maybe you know, cows and horses and bulls and animals live. Longhorns, we're in Texas. Um, you know, but that does, if you if you like oud, this might be one to consider. Here's my problem with this, though, 
is this is $1,400 or $1,500 or whatever it is for 100 ml. Uh, Bortnikoff is 300 bucks for 50 ml. And I actually enjoy the three Bortnikoffs that I have more. I like um, uh, Oud Maximus, I like Oud Monarch, and I like Mysterious Oud better than this. So at this price point, I'm glad I got a decant. I think I would be a little upset if I splurged for a full bottle and this is what came out. Um, is it real oud? Probably. But um, I think some of these artisanal oud houses just give you a better value proposition for money. So I'm not saying that this is a bad fragrance at all. If you have the money to blow and it doesn't matter to you at all, go for it. You know, you will not be disappointed with this fragrance. It's beautiful. Um, it's just kind of a value for money thing. For me, value for money is low, but I had to try it. I'm glad I did. That is the night. Okay, next in this um, Middle Eastern line, I don't even know what they call it. Um, I don't know what they call this special Middle Eastern line that they put out. But next is uh, Promise. By the way, the night was released in 2014, if I didn't say that. Promise is 2017. St same perfumer, Dominique Ropion. And uh, this is one of the strongest fragrance in existence, period. Uh, this is heavy woody amber materials. Actually, the next three I'm gonna, the next couple I'm gonna show you are probably some of the best uses of those woody amber materials that everyone complains about. Uh, there's apple in the top, but you're not gonna get it for very long. It's there. Maybe if you close your eyes and imagine an apple, it's not really a you know, it's not, it's not like, um, it's not like this is an apple fragrance or anything. Well, there's no apple note anyways. It's a, you know, fantasy note that the perfumer has to create. There's no essential oil of apple. Um, and then there's this pink pepper and, and big clove in the mid and rose. Uh, it's the cypriol in the base, I think, that really sets this apart. There's also a castorium note and then that ambroxan, ambery, woody material that everyone complains about. But I think they did a very good job with this. Uh, this is one that is more reasonably priced. I think you can get 100 ml for 400 bucks or so, which still sounds insane when I'm saying 100 ml for 400 bucks, but it's better than $1,500 for 100 ml. So uh, value for money here, I would say is, value for money is probably medium to low if you use a regular scale, but if you're using a Frederick Mall Middle Eastern release, uh, scale value for money here is high. Okay, next. Next is going to be the Dawn, which was released one year after um, Promise. And this is released by Carlos Benaim, one of my favorite perfumers. His name will come up again very soon. He released um, Polo Green in, in the late 70s, which is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. And here he is releasing the Dawn. It just shows how um, it shows how fluid his, perf his, his perfume career has been. He's been very flexible. And I guess you have to be flexible in thinking and flexible in execution to be able to do something like Polo Green in the 70s and Dawn for Frederick Mall in 2018. Um, I, I haven't given this a full wear yet, so I can't speak to the fragrance yet. I just got it. Uh, but it's Turkish Rose, Pink Pepper in the top, Olibanum and Turkish Rose in the mid, uh, Oud, Labdanum, Vetiver, Oak Moss in the base. So I'm excited to give this a full wear. Uh, but, uh, again, very expensive. Glad I have a decant. It's probably in the five to $600 range, if I'm not mistaken. Um for 50 ml, maybe more for 100, maybe close to 1,000. So these are expensive fragrances. Okay, next. Uh, next is The Moon, which is the final release in my collection in this Middle Eastern range. And this was done by the now famous uh, Julien Raskinet. He's famous because he's uh, the pupil of Pierre Bourdon. And um, this is... Um, again, one that I haven't given a full wear to, but it's, uh, it's raspberry, like in Tuscan leather, uh, saffron, and there's this interesting lychee note here, which is very interesting. There's red currants instead of black currant. There's red currant, 
and red berries. And then there's this olibanum. That's the incense, oud, leather, patchouli, amber, sandalwood. I think I'm going to like this. This sounds like it's right up my alley. Um, but again, the price point is very restrictive. You know, you couldn't go spend $1,500, $1,000, you know, well, maybe you could, but I can't just go blow that kind of money on full bottles. So this is what I do. I get a decant, I wear it to my heart's content, and then if I go through the entire decant, I'll go get another one. Okay, last Frederick Mall fragrance, sorry, I dropped it, is uh, Un Flor de Cassie. And uh, I believe this was a women's release, if I'm not mistaken. Usually Frederick Malls are all unisex. This is Mimosa Cassis. Um, and this was an earlier release, by the way. Sandalwood, Vanilla, Rose, Aldehydes, Musk. This was also put out by Dominique Robion, but all the way back in 2000. So we're talking 21, 22 years old now. Uh, it's basically a floral fragrance, but this is supposed to have one of the best Cassis notes, which is um, the leaf of the blackcurrant plant, if I'm not mistaken. And it's supposed to give off this very pissy type vibe. Um, it's, uh, it's very distinctive. And so I haven't given this a full wear. I can't speak to it yet. But one masculine fragrance that I love that I picked up uh, from Chris from Scentland's recommendation is a fragrance called Cycle by Otto Kern. This is discontinued, by the way. Um, this is the only fragrance from Otto Kern that I own. It has this, looks like a ding, 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 a bell on a cycle. Um, and this has a fantastic cassis note. It's very green. Uh, it's mixed with woody notes and mint. But um, this came out in 1991. I love this fragrance for, for high heat. Even though it has that pissy vibe, um, it's just so fresh and sharp. And if you like the note of Cassis, but you don't want to spend 300 bucks for a bottle, uh, and you want something more masculine, check out Otto Kern's Cycle. Uh, Chris from Scentland is never wrong. And then, now we move on to the full bottles of, of, um, Frederick Mall. And the first one is going to be Monsieur. Uh, and this... Oh gosh, I don't know what any of this stuff means here, but it's A20 is the batch code, whatever that means. Uh, maybe it's a 2020 bottle. But um, this is basically patchouli, rum, tangerine, incense. Big incense, big patchouli. Uh, this is a heavy fragrance. Um, Rich Mitch described this as, you know, an artist painting with a big fat brush, giant strokes, you know, there's no um details in this fragrance it's just bam you know in your face heavy and I, I actually like that um i i've you know some people say they're on the fence about this fragrance but i love i love this fragrance so far i've only worn it a couple times but um glad to have a full bottle of it and um you know i think this was the first release that frederick mall did after uh the purchase by estee lauder and it is a little synthetic. People got scared that maybe Estee Lauder was going to come in and ruin everything. This came out in uh, 2015. And uh, Bruno Jovanovic is the uh, perfumer. But I love this fragrance. This is, uh, this is a great patchouli. Next is uh, another Carlos Benaim. And this is a fragrance called Music for a While. And this... Uh, if you like Aventus, I would highly, highly, highly encourage you to try this. Um, this really blew me away. Uh, this came out in, uh, 2018. So I think a year after, um, the fragrance that he did for, uh, the Middle Eastern collection. But just think about this. I mean, music for a while on one side of his career... Polo Green on the other. I talked about that in on Eugene's stream on Christmas Eve. If you if you were there, he was nice enough to have me on, and um, I appreciate that. I really enjoy chatting with with those guys. Uh, Eugene and Duck are some of the best people I've met along my journey here. But long story short, this is a amazing take on a fougere. This is one of the most interesting fougere fragrances I think I've ever smelled. Um, because it definitely has that lavender, 
Uh, Duck says that it has the same lavender from Tom Ford's Beau de Jour, which maybe he's right because Tom Ford is coming up next and they're in Estee Lauder house. So maybe he's onto something. He was right about Pierre Bourdon for so long doing the Creed fragrances. Maybe he's onto something here. Uh, the lavender smells like the lavender in Beau de Jour. I don't have it, but, um, I, this is so, this is so interesting because it's, it's definitely a fougere. It has that lavender fruit. It has this pineapple note in the mid, which, you know, trendy with, uh, Aventus, but I wear this in the summer, even though this is a heavy fragrance, the fruitiness mixed with the patchouli mixed with the, you know, heavy labdanum. And then the, uh, the lavender is just, this is such a modern, you know, if you want to smell modern, if you want to wear a fougere, but you don't want to wear Dracar Noir, wear this. This blew me away. I wish I had 100, 100 mil of this. Now, 50 mil will probably last me forever. Um, but um, I'm very, very, very glad that I was talked into trying this. So um, music for a while is a is a definite thumbs up for me, and Carlos Benayim hits another home run. And then the vintage Frederick Mall bottle that I have is of Musk Ravageur, and you can tell it's a vintage because of the old school cap. And also what's interesting is, is there is an expiration date. Let's see if you guys can see that expiration date on the bottom. Oh, it's going to be tough. Um, da -da. Oh, well, you're going to have to take my word for it. Um, it says that it expires in um, 2016, May 20th of 2016. This was created, I think, in 2011, it says. But... Um, they put expiration dates on these back then. Well, they obviously stopped doing that. There's no need for that because this is um, uh, this is a take on Shalimar, a lot of people say, Maurice Roussel's updated take. And it does have that, you know, Shalimar vanilla type feel to it. But it also has this um, clove, cinnamon, uh, amber feel. Uh, I love this fragrance. Um and I absolutely love this older formulation. I have a decant of a newer one. I didn't grab it because it, it doesn't matter, but um, it is not as animalic. This is a little bit more, the musk is a little furrier, you could say. Um, and so vintage musk ravageur, if you can find the older style bottles, um, I would highly recommend it. Otherwise, the new take I think is a little bit more of a gourmand. I don't think it's as, um, I don't think it's what it was originally meant to be. I think they reformulated it to try to make it sell better, but this is what it was originally supposed to be meant to be. And, and I absolutely love it. I'm glad I have a bottle. Okay. Now onto the house of Tom Ford and then Estee Lauder and we'll be done. So Tom Ford, the first fragrance in the Tom Ford collection is the original that launched the brand, Tom Ford for Men. This is a 2008 bottle, I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And this is actually a citrus fragrance that I really like. Um, it was created by Yves Cesar in 2007. And um, I think I like this fragrance because even though it's citrus, it clearly has a freshness to it with the lemon and the ginger and the violet leaf. It also has tobacco, amber, you know, patchouli, oak moss, vetiver, and cypriol oil, which I, I like that note a lot. Um, the cypriol oil note in Amois Journeyman is just absolutely gorgeous. But I like this fragrance because even though it has some of those heavier notes, it's still fresh. It's optimistic. You can wear it in the summer in the heat. Uh, and um, I'm glad to have this because I hear it's discontinued. So prices are probably about to start going up. Um, next is one of my favorite leather fragrances of all time, and you know what's coming. Uh, this is Tuscan Leather. And I don't know how old my bottle is. Maybe someone will know. Um, it is uh, AC6, whatever that means. But um, this is raspberry, animalic, cigarette type. It almost smells like, um, you know, cigarettes in an ashtray. Uh, it has this olibanum note, which I love frankincense. And then it has this leather and suede accord. Um, it feels more suede to me than it does leather, but 
Um, there is a copy of this. If you don't want to pay Tom Ford prices, I also hear this is watered down in the new bottles, which I can't speak to that because I think this is an older bottle. Um, but if you don't want to pay Tom Ford prices, but you want something close, and I'm usually not a fan of clones, but this, uh, Rasasi La Yukawam is a very good clone. Uh, it's also the best work Rasasi's ever done, hands down. This is a 2020 bottle, so all this talk about the new bottles I read here not being the same as the old ones. This thing lasts and lasts and lasts. Um, the difference is instead of this raspberry note like Tuscan leather has, this has like um, like a blended fruits accord. So instead of just raspberry, it feels like strawberries and apricots and uh, almost like this fruit melange, if you will, and um, big saffron note in these perfumes, by the way. Very Middle Eastern, but I, I love it. I love the leather. I actually like them both. I probably won't replace this and just wear this when this is done. Um, there, there are differences. The leather note is different somehow, but, you know, to be honest, with my juice level right here on 50 ml, you know, I'm probably set for a long time. I prefer the original, but if you don't want to splurge, this is one clone where the hype is actually real and worth it. Uh, you'll probably never hear me talk about a clone again, but but there it is. Um, okay, next is um, a fragrance that is also discontinued. Surprise, surprise. And it's Tom Ford Anthracite for men. And uh, this is basically Sichuan pepper, ginger, spices, and um, this also uses ambery woody materials that everyone complains about but it, they do a very good job of it um there is leather in this i will say if you like fragrances from the 1980s if you like fahrenheit or if you like those old school like narciso rodriguez for him if you like that it smells a little bit like concrete wet concrete try this uh this is a fragrance that i think the public hated but i think as you know, fragrance connoisseurs. Um, I think this is one that you would really like. And this is also one where I could see uh, as the years go by and supply dwindles, prices go up, up, up on this. This is getting harder and harder to find. Glad I have 100 ml. And then last but not least in Tom Ford's line is my, fav is my wife's favorite fragrance on me. And that's Oudwood, as you can see. I'm going to need a new bottle soon, or at some point, probably, if I even buy a new one of this. I wore this when my daughter was born. Um, this, I don't know, it's not It's not a vintage bottle, though. It's a, a AA6 batch code, again, whatever that means. But um, this is, there's no real oud in this, I don't think. I think it's all synthetic, and it probably is. But uh, this set off a bit of a trend again. Tom Ford set off the trend with um, YSL's M7. I showed it yesterday in my YSL video. And then he kind of reignited the Oud trend, if you will, with Oud Wood. This came out in 2007. You know, other bigger niche houses like Creed released theirs in 2011. You know, by 2010, everyone was putting out an Oud perfume, it seemed like. So Tom Ford really kind of senses where the wind is blowing. To me, this is heavy cardamom, uh, which I love that note, and also heavy Brazilian rosewood. Um, those two notes are really the, the main notes to my nose, with some pepper. Um, yeah, those two notes, the Brazilian rosewood and the cardamom, are really the two main ones. And then that synthetic oud in the background... Who knows, maybe they use a drop of real oud. Don't don't sue me, Tom Ford, but um, it's mostly a synthetic oud accord, I think. Uh, but still smells very good, very masculine, um, and also somehow appealing to the masses. You know, even though it's uh, got a lot of synthetics to it, um, they tend to, you know, no normal people, not niche frag heads, tend to like this one. Okay, on to the final house so we can get this done in under an hour. Um, Estee Lauder, the, uh, house that, the eponymous house that we are talking about here. First up is going to be a fragrance called Youth Dew. And Youth Dew, let's see if you can see this here. Youth Dew is actually, um, 
one of the most influential women's fragrances to come about ever. It was released in the year of um, 1953, uh, so way, way, way back when. It also smells strikingly similar to YSL Opium for women, which I absolutely love. Uh, I think I like Opium for women a little bit more than this, and I don't know why, because I've compared them, and they're very similar. This has a lot of resins in the base. Incense, tolu balsam, peru balsam, patchouli, oak moss, amber. It has that clove and cinnamon combo and spices, which um, opium has. Uh, you know, maybe it's because this has a note of lavender. Maybe that lavender and aldehydes at the top adds a little something different. Very similar feel to JHL, by the way. Um, Two, two peas in a pod here, if you will. But um, if you like, this will definitely make my women's fragrances that I wear list. Because um, the, in the oak moss in this, by the way, you can smell the heavy oak moss. It, it comes out of the barrel smelling a little bit like, you know, cola or um, Dr. Pepper. And uh, Roja's Enigma... Poor Ohm does that, by the way, and he charges 500 bucks for 50 ml or whatever it is, and this is 20 bucks. You can find a partial like I did. I think it was to about here when I bought it, worn it a couple times. And um, yeah, I mean, if you're a per if you're a student of perfume history, Youth Do is a is a must. Okay, next is we're skipping to the year of my birth, 1985. This is Louder for Men. Um, this is. A citrus fragrance. You could almost make the comparison that if you like Devon, this would be up your style. Um, I think I prefer this one, to be honest with you. Uh, but I'm still glad to have it. It has this interesting juniper uh, berries, which juniper berries are used to um, uh, to go into gin uh, to kind of freshen up a, a gin uh, glass, let's say it's got it's got galbanum, anise, it's got that old school carnation note and oak moss. It is a classic masculine fragrance. If you smell this, you probably will say, Oh god, I've smelled that before. Uh, but I don't think this is a vintage bottle, to be honest with you. I think this is a normal, um, just a normal modern day bottle. Uh, the vintage probably had better oak moss, um, but um. Glad to have it. Don't overpay for it, but you can find bottles floating around for a respectable price. Next are two curveballs, two women's fragrances that I found that I absolutely love. I'm going to show you one that I love, and then I'm going to show you one that I love, love, love. Uh, and, you know, these are, I'm 100% I'm open with everybody. Uh, this is called Knowing. And again, this is a fragrance for women. It was done by the great Jean Carlio, Jean Carlo, uh, which was the perfumer for all the great Pataus. So Patau Pour Homme, Patau Privé, um, Ma Liberté, EDP, which is another one of the women's fragrances I wear that I absolutely love. So to me, he's a legend. He's one of the best perfumers of all time, even though he's only done 17 perfumes. I told you about that Yoji Yamamoto home that I think he did most of the work on. And then when Procter & Gamble bought the house of Jean Pateau, the new perfumer kind of took over and finished it and took all the credit. Um, but uh, Jean Carlio, uh, 1988 release. And uh, this is a very complex fragrance. It's a sheaf. Uh, it's a floral sheaf. Um, and it does have aldehydes, mimosa, rose in the top. It has an interesting plum, tuberose, melon combination in the top. And then you get to the heart, patchouli, cardamom, bay leaf, orris root, cedar, jasmine, orange blossom, lily of the valley. Um, and then the base, oak moss, patchouli, civet. It's the civet, I think, that really does this for me. Um, and then it's got orris, so it's kind of powdery. It is a revelation, um... And, and I really enjoy this fragrance. I think more guys should try it out. Um, it is a little bit floral sometimes, uh, but it is so rich and complex and decadent that, um, you know, this is one that should be on the list. And then my favorite hidden gem, we're not going to be done in an hour, but 
you know, forget the YouTube algorithms. This is one that is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. This is a secret that I, you know, will hold near and dear. It's another sheaf. It's a fragrance from Estee Lauder called Azure. Look at the bottle. Look at this bottle right here. If you can find this bottle, buy it. Don't spend $1,000 on a Roja Dove or Frederick Mall. Spend two, 300 bucks on a vintage bottle of Azure. This is Azure Pure Fragrance Spray. Um, I hope you can see that properly. And it was released in 1969 as a women's fragrance. God bless the women of the 60s and 70s. This is one of the best oak moss leather fragrances I've ever smelled. It's a leather sheaf. And um, the leather and oak moss in this just floors me. Uh, absolutely floors me every time. It has a floral heart, uh, but it has artemisia, bergamot in the top, and sage. Those are masculine notes. It has geranium and vetiver. Vetiver is a masculine note. It has oak moss, leather, patchouli, amber, musk. That's a leather, that's a masculine fragrance right there. And yes, it has cyclamen, lang lang, rose, but those are supporting notes. You get a huge leather, huge oak moss. The oak moss in this you know, if I wanted to let somebody study oak moss, this would be what I would spray for them. Um, it is just, it's one of my favorite leather fragrances of all time. It's probably one of the finest fragrance that money can buy, period, in my opinion. Um, and so that's my hidden gem. You now know it. If you're into leathers like I am, if you like this, remember, this came out in 1966, Aramis for Men, Aramis, Aramis. This came out in 1969. This is probably the closest thing to each other. I love them both. I think I like this a little bit more, believe it or not. This is one of my favorite fragrances ever. This I think I like a little bit more. So, um, I now have no secrets left in the leather game. Uh, the leather world for per perfume. This has gone an hour. It was a long, uh, family portrait, but it was a great idea to do an entire, you know, umbrella conglomerate brand and all the brands that they own. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you've lasted an hour, thank you very much. I appreciate all the support everyone's given me. Again, I'm doing these early in my YouTube video because I want you to be able to go in there and say, hey, I want you to review this. I want you to talk, talk, talk more about this. Um, I've got a couple more video ideas before we start doing individual reviews. So uh, if you want to get an in-depth dive in any of these, please leave me a comment. Um, let me know what you think. And again, thank you so much for your support and watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.